So that was the copyright free version. If you want to see the version with the original opening, uh, the link will be right in the description. Anyways, let's talk about the animation a bit. I was sitting at my desk one day, like uh, you do as a, as a drawer, when I thought about how cool it would be to make an anime intro for the live series. I heard a lot of people in the community talking about it and Martin during his stream sometimes too. And I thought, why not take that role upon me? I wanted to get better at animation anyway. And doing this would be a great opportunity for me to make a whole animation with colors and effects and everything. And also make it from my favorite series and give the fans something to look at. So I called up my friend Raku and I told him everything. So we went looking for a good song and song covers of anime intros and we found absolutely nothing for at least a couple hours. And then I decided to go to bed because it was getting late and I got reminded of Hey Kids from Noragami, which is an anime I watched as a young girl. And I was like, why did I think of this sooner? And when I looked at the lyrics, some of the lyrics kind of came along with like the life series and like the hey kids like come on you can't say that that kind of fits right i called up my friend in the middle of the night no i'm just kidding i called him the next morning and i was like yo i found the thing and he was like this song this is it so we started making a rough outline slash storyboard the initial idea is from going to the green scenes to the yellow scenes to the red scenes and I don't mean like literally, I mean like the life series, like uh, the lives, right? The green, yellow, red. And even though, like I said, it's not literally with uh, the, the first scenes, you have some red scenes in like the, the start of the animation and some yellow scenes at the end. So it's more about the theme and the atmosphere that gets like slightly darker it goes from a little silly to oh wait are they um offing each other now which is what i went for so let's talk about the animation scene by scene i wanted to show in the first two scenes how much the creators all get along all with normal eye colors except for tango and friendly faces all around, being silly, having fun, being themselves. And then you gotta zoom in on Grian, the creator of the series and the guy who made it all happen. In an anime opening, you always kind of need one character that stands out a little more than the rest, so um, it's kind of Grian and Scar. Also because they're kind of my favorites and you know, I'm the one animating so I can do whatever I want. Soon after that, we get the five banners of the victors. Wildlife and Future series not included. They look ominous and scary and I love that for them. Uh, I drew this quite a while ago. Usually when you get like these stills, they're like made separately in a different program. Then we got the title screen. I went for like the classic black dramatic uh, flair. Um, my handwriting is not the best, I will say. I could have made it look even cooler if uh, I genuinely knew how to do calligraphy. Calligra cal how do you even say that? Calligraphy. Yes, that would have been nice. I kind of took inspiration of the official anime opening here with the the glitch and everything. I just thought that that fit really well, and I also had these silly buildings from every season that stand stood out to me the most, which was a paint to animate, by the way. But we did it. Or well, I did it. As a first, we have the Scar and Green scene. The one that made the whole life series what it is today, in my opinion. Green pulled a creeper prank on Scar, being the first death in third life and the first death in the life series. And it was so funny and everyone loved that moment, I believe. It's, it's just really classic, so it had to be in there, of course. And it transitions into a secret task falling from the sky. And this is time to mention that yes, I scattered the scenes. And I mean, I scattered the live series through each other. They are like this little salad. Because it was, like I said, about going from uh, lights to dark with like the theme. Well, if I did things in chronological order from third life to secret life, the mood couldn't build up so well. But other than that, the scene is rather peaceful. 
showing pearl trying to peep as Bumbo his secret task. Which couldn't actually happen like this in a real game, but hey, it's animation, I can do what I want. Then we got Martin with his aha joke from the Southlands, and that just had to be in there, of course. Oh, amazing. This scene with the Bread Boys was a little bit more um, about the aesthetics, not really about the animation. Look at them being cute and adorable. I should probably say they're really cool and strong and dramatic, but uh, they're, they're kind of adorable. And then you have the clockers um, falling down on the flavors. I mean, like, the song lyrics. They're falling down on the song lyrics. I thought about animating this, but I kinda like this idea. And also it's funny with Etho just popping in because of the absent dad he is. The next scene is Lizzie trying to uh, riz up her husband, saying she likes bad boys and stuff. Because that moment, oh, I love that moment. It's a funny moment, yeah. I, I can't say anything more. This was just my personal favoritism. Then we have Tango and Skids in the Heart Foundation. I admit that this one could have been a little better. I portrayed it with dice instead of uh, the redstone because I'm not gonna draw that uh, amalgamation of things. No, thank you. I think dice just do the trick. Just right. Ah. The scene that took me the longest. I mean, it's also the longest scene, so I guess that makes sense. This one is kind of like going from the green scenes. You're like, wow, they're fighting each other. It was fun and pain to animate this. I also f still think I could have done better, but that's like usually with this kind of stuff. Um, you can literally see me get better per scene because I animated everything in chronological order. And then we got a quick scene of Scott shooting the final arrow in Last Life. And then we got a scene of the adorable ranchers running away from the warden, which uh, Tango, by the way, um, spawned and took with. I forgot his name. What was his name again? If one scene is dark, in my opinion, it's Grian telling Mumbo that they can still be friends. While Grian is red and Mumbo is yellow. It was funny. But in the animation, you just gotta, you know, spice everything up a little bit to make it a little bit more dramatic. So um, Mama looks absolutely traumatized, I'm so sorry. And Green looks like he's about to go insane, or maybe he already is insane. And then we switch to the lady that's even more insane with Pearl. Later on in the animation, I was looking for ways to make the transitions a little more interesting. I got quite some interesting transitions in the final product, but also many straight cuts, which is a little sad. Although it's something I should have thought of sooner, but a great lesson to know for the next time. Also, I think I did 5am pro justice with this. She looks feral. I love it. And yes, that's Tilly in the background, of course. We got the Marco Polo scene in Limited Life, where the bad boys are chasing Tango, which is such a funny scene. Just Green saying Marco and Tango running away in the mines and saying Polo back. Really enjoyable. Also, Tango did a great job outsmarting them. I just thought I need that little bit of that scene in here. Etho setting fire to Ren. It's a short moment in Third Life where he does this, uh, I believe. And to be honest, I really wanted a moment more with Etho and also with Randog, so that's what I did. Then we got three scenes of Cleo, Bigby and Lizzie screaming, basically, all for different reasons. And I frankly wish that I gave those three, especially the first two, more scenes. But they have a short moment to shine here. Then we got Ren and Martin Dockward's scene. I knew I wanted this to be them. They are so dramatic and therefore need the most dramatic scene. Fun fact, I made the background actually by screen recording Minecraft and drawing over it frame by frame. If it works, it works. This one is also um, from the original anime opening, kind of taken away, with uh, the two characters just walking in slow one next to each other. I thought it was perfect. Then we got the Scar S tier bucket clutch. The whole reason why I started making fan art of this series in the first play was because of Double Life, and this scene was everything to me. 
Also, we got another winner scene. It's uh, it's a little bit more sad this one because Double Life didn't really end in a in a really victorious manner, if you could say that. Right after we got another winner scene with Martin going absolutely crazy on time, you see Scott in the foreground and Impulse just got completely off guard by Martin and his sudden action. Also, instead of saying Impulse ran out of time, I did you ran out of time to. Uh, Keep it a little bit more general. Ah, the Wither scene. This one is actually almost completely frame by frame, which is really nice. I mean, I did everything frame by frame, of course, but this is like, I drew every single frame again, except for maybe one. That's why it looks so smooth. And I thought maybe I should have done that more, but no, no, I would have died if I, uh, if I did that. Here we got Jem and her eyes showing she went through green, yellow and red. The zombies appearing behind her as she is yellow and red because of the boogie curse. And she stretches her hand out as if to say, come join us. This scene also provides context for the next scene where Impulse runs after Joel to join the boogie squad. Not asking really nicely, but you know. And of course we need to have a shot of beat ups with his axe. I just realized you can't even see that he has an axe. There's no frame where it literally shows him having an axe, but hey, you know, the motion itself explains that, I suppose. This is one of the more thought out transition scenes with the blood changing into the feathers. I thought it was quite the, quite good. Of course, there needed to be one canary scene in there. I'm sorry, Jimmy. Maybe you win in wildlife. Then we got a shot of the secret keeper and Scar in front of it. Of course, he needed to be there because he was stuck there. And I thought the secret keeper was surely something that needed to be in this animation too, since it was such a big part of the live series and the fan arts and oh, good times, good times with Scar. Next, we got Scar as the winner of Secret Life with the red eyes. And finally, we have another shot of all the winners with Scar in the middle, rocking the purple eyes. And we leave the community to decide what the purple eyes really means, you know? I'm not saying anything with this. So here you have it. We went over all the scenes and what they mean, some insight as to how and what happened. And I will show you guys some more cursed inside information in uh, one, two, three. Yeah, it was fun to, uh, to animate, sure. I really tried to give everyone at least two scenes, despite just the one and a half minute this um, animation was, I did try to really have everyone in there because this series is from everyone. Green and Scar make the most amount of appearances, both around 10 times, I think. And Green having a little bit more animated scenes, but he's kind of the main character in this anime intro. Other than that, I tried to keep the art style as consistent as I could, but in animation is really hard. And especially the drawings I did, uh, separate from the project, like the banners and the last scene, the art style is just a little bit off, but it's still quite okay. It's been worse in the past. I did almost all of the backgrounds in Autodesk Sketchbook, leaving the animation work up to Clip Studio Paint. I animated all the scenes in the chronological order, like I've said before, with the song in the background. And weirdly as it is, I'm not that tired of the song, even though I've heard it many times. And now you might think, but Bailey, how did you find the motivation to continue and actually finish this animation? Well, my friends, let me tell you. Come here, come here. We're very, very stupid. Very stubborn. For real. I'm very stubborn and pulled some all-nighters for this thing. It's my second biggest animation project, my first being for my webtoon. And petty and sad as I was from being rejected from my dream animation school, I was like, I'm gonna just do it myself. Because like I said, I'm really petty. Um, anyways, my, uh, my stubborn and petty attitude is what helped me push through. 
And don't forget some of my lovely friends on my Discord server who gave me advice and stick with me while I streamed some of this. It wasn't easy, but I sure as heck am happy I pushed through. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. If you like these kind of videos with like inside information about bigger projects, please tell me. I, uh, I love to know. Have a good one, guys.